שלום עליכם רבותיי, שלום עליכם, בעזרת השם מדמי אותו לצדיק אבי חיים פינטו, מדמי אותו בבא סלם, מדמי אותו מהגרנד פאודר אבי מושר ומפיטו, מהקדוש ברוך הוא בעזרת השם קיבל ומנפיק ברכה והצלחה, בסייעתא דשמיא גדולה, מלכא דה אלמוי ואחת קון וזה קט קון, מהקדוש ברוך הוא בעצם אופן בגיץ הפרנסה, נגיד בשואה, נגיד בזיווג, נגיד במזל, ומי אור ריץ' פייס אוף קמפליט סקסס, אמן כן יהי רצון בעזרת השם. אמן. ונאמרותיי, not being granted entry into Eretz Yisrael. It says in the Torah, Kedushai, this week's parasha, Miriam and Nevi'ah passes away, she goes to her world, and now B'nai Yisrael are sitting in the desert and they have no water to drink. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu comes to Moshe Rabbeinu and tells Moshe Rabbeinu, go to the stone, talk to the stone, and the stone will bring water and that water will be able to, to feed all B'nai Yisrael and all the, 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 the crop and all the, the animals that come with them. Moshe Rabbeinu calls Aaron HaKohen, they take the stick, they go to the stone, and the Torah says, instead of talking to the stone, Moshe Rabbeinu hits the stone. As a result of that, Chazal say, because Moshe Rabbeinu hit the stone instead of talking to the stone, his punishment was that HaKadosh Baruch Hu did not allow him entry into Eretz Yisrael. So you know, Abutai, something that it bothers me, even the thought of that. First of all, What makes a difference between hitting the stone and between talking to the stone? And why is that small mistake that Moshe Rabbeinu did, that it was Isha Elohim, he did only Torah and Mitzvot. What now, HaKadosh Baruch Hu acts with such severity for the smallest mistake, instead of to- uh, talking, he hit? And why is that enough of a, pun- uh, of a sin? Why is that enough, uh, tangible enough that HaKadosh Baruch Hu punished him to the point where Moshe begged and cried 500 times? to enter the Eretz Yisrael, and he was not allowed. What was so bad about he talk, hitting the stone instead of talking about it? So in order to understand that, we have to understand, first of all, what is the concept of what we call punishment? The concept of punishment is something simple. The Zohar Kadosh says, and this is what mentioned in the Gemara, En Onesh, no punishment comes unless a sin came before it. Meaning, Every single, every single thing, every single uh, hardship that we go through in our life comes for a reason. Where it says a person is going through troubles, a person is going through troubles, he should look into what he, his deeds to see where he can fix in order to stop those troubles. But as well, I explain how does the troubles and how does the punishment materialize in our life. Because we know HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Elachum, Echanun, Echapayim, Echesed. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is full of kindness. He's only kindness. So where does it, the punishment come to a decision making And it comes to a place of action in our lives. Because we cannot say that it's HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the one that is bringing down the judgment to the world. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is full of kindness. So as well, HaKadosh says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu created what we call Mikateregim. What is a Mikateregim? So whoever, we, whoever has been in a courtroom knows that there is the defendant, then there is the one that is suing. The one that is coming and says, he passed on this law and he passed on this law, and he's trying to essentially make the person be guilty and try to prove the other one guilty. That is a mekatrik. HaKadosh Baruch Hu created angels, which are from the left side, the negative side, that their job is to search where a person created a flaw, created a, 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 a lack of consistency in the, respe- in the kvod kutsha berichu, in the respect of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And once there is that flaw, they have something they could come and sue on. Where essentially these angels are what? They are protectors of the respect of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That is their job. When we sin, we essentially diminish HaKadosh Baruch Hu's respect. Because when, if, you, if HaKadosh Baruch Hu asks for you something, and you don't perform it in the correct path, or HaKadosh Baruch Hu said do not do something, and you did it, clearly the respect of Hashem to a certain level was diminished. Those angels search where HaKadosh Baruch Hu's respect was diminished and as a result they come forward and they sue and they try to chas v'shalom uh, bring a person to a place of, uh, of, uh, of, of receiving punishment for that place. And that's essentially what we call Abotei, the whole concept of Tikkun. The Tikkun is what? The reparation of the world is repairing the Kvod de Kutsha Berichu. Repairing the Kavod of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And that's why we say that people that do teshuva 
are at much higher level than people that are tzaddikim. Because the person that did teshuvah, we paired a piece of the kavod of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, not just to himself, but even to the public. Where he shows the world, look, I came from a bottom place and I'm here, and I came close, and I brought change in my life in order to respect HaKadosh Baruch Hu and his kingdom. And that's why those who do teshuvah were at such a high level. We can also learn that one, if he wants to repair chas shalom sin, what he needs to do is repair, if he wants to go to the root of that at least, repair the respect that was flawed, the respect that was diminished. Let's put that aside. In the sin of Moshe Rabbeinu, which we can even barely call it a sin, Achida says the fact that we're not sure if that was the reason that Moshe Rabbeinu was punished, it shows you how small it was. Moshe Rabbeinu sin, if you would like to call it, where he hit the stick instead of talking to it, what was so bad about it? It wasn't that it was a sin that he did something which was not allowed. It was because he diminished the kavod of HaKadosh Baruch Hu in a certain level. Where the Zohar Kadosh says, maybe we can explain it in a way like this. Imagine what a teaching would, we would be able to teach our kids that when Bnei Israel needed water, HaKadosh Baruch Hu told the stone to bring water and the stone being an inanimate object respected HaKadosh Baruch Hu's will and took out water and fed all B'nai Israel. Imagine what a teaching we would be able to pass on for generation for, for, for thousands of years. The fact of how even a stone respected the will of Hashem. And that teaching that could have been so beautiful, that could have inspired so many people, that could have greatened the, uh, 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 the kingdomship of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that the stone listened to the will of Moshe, which was sent by Hashem, was all destroyed when Moshe Rabbeinu hit the stone instead of talking to it. But really, what did Moshe Rabbeinu do? He pulled down to a certain degree future respect and future greatening of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's kingdomship. As a result of that, Mikatragim, those who search to find where HaKadosh Baruch Hu's respect was diminished in order to bring someone to a place of judgment for that uh, disrespect, came forward and they had grasped for the first time on Moshe Rabbeinu. When Moshe Rabbeinu until now did not, never gave them any grasp to hold on to. He never allowed the Mekatragim to bring a judgment to Moshe Rabbeinu because there was no place where Moshe Rabbeinu brought a diminishing for the, 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 the respect of Kut Berichu. But here, the one time where Moshe Rabbeinu avoided even future respect and future honor that HaKadosh Baruch could have been received and could have, we, we, we could have repaired. For that, the Mekat brought upon Moshe Rabbeinu a grasp to punish him. But we can learn about something incredible from this teaching. We can learn from here that in our life, we can all relate to the fact that we're not always perfect. Where we fall sometimes our sins, we regret them, we don't want to repeat them. We say, En tzadik pa'at ha'asit there's no such thing as a tzaddik in the world that doesn't sin. Or Shlomo Melech says, a tzaddik, who is a tzaddik? The tzaddik is the one that falls seven times. Not the fact that he falls seven times. It's the fact that he's able to get up seven times. So we all want to change. We all want to be good. Nobody wants to be chas shalom flawed. But in the course of our life, we have situations where we fall. So it's not about the fact that we fell. It's how we get up from the fall. So how can we all about I bring upon ourselves a place where we clearly recognize our wrongdoings? That's the first step that we all need to do, to recognize what we did wrong. But the second step is how can we clean the effect of that wrongdoing to clean the residue that was left from that wrongdoing? Maybe we can learn from here something simple. If we want to clean and to take away the grasp of those mekatragim, those who are trying to find a place to bring out judgment to the world, if we want to completely take away their grasp and the opportunity that they have to bring judgment, it's very simple. If what gave them power was a diminishing of the respect of Hashem, what will take away their power and what will bring us bacha is what? The greatening of the respect of Hashem. And that's why we say that there is almost no bigger mitzvah in the world and in that same very fashion, no bigger avera in the world than Kiddush Hashem and Chirul Hashem. Honoring the name of Hashem 
and chas v'shem diminishing the name of Hashem. Honoring the name of Hashem, there is no mitzvah that is bigger than that. When a person gets up and he goes in the street and he does the kiddush Hashem, where he shows the world that he, as a Jew, represents the Kaddish Baruch Hu, and he represents the Torah, does something good, and shows the entire world what the Torah really stands for, the greatening of Malchuto, the Kut Baruch Hu, that he brings to the world, is something that you can only achieve in years upon years of mitzvot, in years upon years of good deeds. In that same very way, that one Chas V'sham Hashem can destroy a lot. That's why about that we should all find an act where we can bring respect to the name of HaKadosh Baruch mm. Find an act where we can show the world what is the Torah, what is the beauty mm. of the Torah. Share a chidush that you've heard, share something beautiful that you've heard. And by doing so, we'll bring a complete sweetening to the gvura, a complete sweetening to the strength. And we'll all live lives full of bracha, mm. atzlacha, mm. and only good things to come. Amen. 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 Amen.